coming up on this episode of Encounter TV. The gospel is so powerful that even when a hypocrite preaches it, it can change a life. Yet Christians don't preach it. It's the potential to change everything. For centuries, tyrants and governments and kings and wicked men and women have tried to silence. You're watching Encounter TV, featuring the evangelistic healing ministry of David Diga Hernandez. David is taking the saving and healing power of God to this generation and the nations of the world. A generation is being inspired. You'll encounter the Holy Spirit's presence, God's healing power, the truth of the word, the love of Christ, and freedom through the miraculous. You're watching Encounter TV. Hello, I'm David Diga Hernandez, and you are watching Encounter TV. The scripture says in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. On this edition of Encounter TV, I'm talking to you about the true power of God. And the true power of God is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everywhere that the gospel is preached, lives are transformed, souls are saved, the sick are healed, the captive is delivered. And I believe today that as you hear this message, it's going to stir your faith. I'm preaching a message today called The True Power of God, and it is about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I preach this message at the Carson Civic Center in Carson, California. And we're going to show you the footage of this message in just a moment. And then at the end of the program, we're going to show you footage from that same event where the power of the Holy Spirit moved in a tremendous way. I want you to experience the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit like never before. And I believe that as you watch this message and as you watch how the Holy Spirit moved at the end of the service that we're going to show you, that you will experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Again, I'm talking today about the true power of God, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's go now to Carson, California, where I'm ministering this message. Watch this. What is the power? Is the power the Holy Spirit? Well, no, he's a person. A person can have power, but a person can't be power. Is the power the miracles that you may see here tonight? Is the power when someone comes out of a wheelchair and when they're healed? I think about this all the time. I'm in the healing ministry, but I don't emphasize healing. I emphasize Jesus. I emphasize Christ. Is the power when people come to the front, they begin to tremble and they're slain under the power of the Holy Spirit? Not necessarily. It's an effect of the power, but it's not the power. Is the power when I worship really loud and pray in tongues really loud? No, because noise does not equal power. You can be as loud as you want if you're not living holy and you're not living a lifestyle of prayer it's just volume it's just noise what is the power of god what is the power that advances the kingdom what is the power that overtakes nations what is this power that overtook rome what is this power that moves throughout the earth as a force that affects change and transforms things everywhere it goes romans chapter 1 verse 16 for i am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. The gospel is the power of God. The gospel and the, and the power of God are attached to each other. Look at this verse in Mark chapter 1, verse 14 through 15. This is after Jesus' baptism and before he selects his disciples. It says this, now, after John had been taken into custody, 
Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. His first message that he began to preach was that the kingdom of God was now. It was here. It was among you. It was within you. And therefore, it's now time to repent of your sins and believe the good news about what he did, did on the cross. This is what the Bible teaches. The power of God is the gospel. For centuries, tyrants and governments and kings and wicked men and women have tried to silence the gospel. They've tried through persecution to silence the gospel. They've tried through political pressure to silence the gospel. They've tried through social pressure to silence the gospel. But you cannot stop the power of God. The power of God moves throughout the earth through all these centuries, despite what men and women have tried to do, and it's still affecting lives today. You have the kingdom in you. You have the power of God. You have the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everywhere we go, the gospel should be preached. Everywhere we go, we're taking dominion. Why? Because we carry the gospel message with us. The scripture equates the gospel message or identifies the gospel message with your feet. Why? Because Jesus said go. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15, which is in reference to the armor that we should take up for spiritual warfare. It says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Romans chapter 10 verse 14 says this, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? This is why the scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring good news. Matthew chapter 10 verse 14, when someone rejects the gospel, what does it tell you? Does it say stop talking? Does it equate it with your mouth? No. What does it say? If any household or town refuses to welcome or listen to your message, shake this, its dust from your feet as you leave. The gospel is powerful. There is nobody more capable of changing the world than the one who goes with the gospel. That's not rhetoric. That's not cliche. That's truth. If ever you've looked upon this world and became sad or distressed or frustrated, if ever you've seen all that is occurring on a global scale and become discouraged, I'm here to encourage you tonight. You have the power to change the world. You have the power to affect change. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ that transforms everything it touches. In fact, the gospel is so powerful that it maintains its power even when hypocrites preach it. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1 verse 18. But that doesn't matter. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice, and I will continue to rejoice. Or think of those in Matthew 7. Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? He doesn't deny that they did good works. He denies that he knew them. The gospel is so powerful that even when a hypocrite preaches it, it can change a life. Yet Christians don't preach it. It's the potential to change everything. Now, you can have the gospel, and there may be power on it. That's true, even if it's a hypocrite that preaches it. But this also means that even if you're a Christian who preaches, if it's not the gospel, there's no power. We've become so distracted with so many other messages and then we wonder why we're having trouble transforming our cities, our regions, the world, or lives. The enemy knows the power of the gospel. Even Satan knows. He can't remove the power from the gospel. But he can remove the gospel from your mouth. 
church, if we don't preach the gospel, nobody will. It has been entrusted to us to declare this message. I've heard it said, and you've heard it said, preach the gospel, and when necessary, use words. One of the most foolish things I've ever heard. You know who says that? People who are ashamed of the name of Jesus. And who are afraid to be identified as extreme or radical. You can identify me as an extremist. I am an extremist. I believe there's only one way to heaven. There's no other way to heaven. His name is Jesus. Still to come on this edition of Encounter TV. We're going to go back to Carson, California in just a moment where I'll be finishing that message on the true power of God. But now it's time for our Mark 16 Miracles segment. This is the segment where I take your footage of you praying for the sick, prophesying, evangelizing, capturing it on footage, and sending it in to us. And I believe that every believer is to move out in the power of the Holy Spirit in this way. So what you're about to see is footage of someone who sent in the footage to us and they prayed for the sick and I want you to watch this. I want you to be encouraged. And then again, we're going to come back and we're going to go to Carson, California where I'll be finishing that message on the true power of God. I want you to watch this. I just met her on a call. Uh, she has no eardrums. And uh, we prayed twice already. We just now prayed twice. Uh, she has some hearing aids, but she has no eardrums. She's completely deaf since the age of six. Right now we prayed twice. The second time, her left ear opened up and she can start hearing. Can you hear in your left ear? I you can hear, hear stuff. before, but you I can hear before. It. You did it three times. I did it, okay. You can hear my finger snapping? That's okay, true. God just opened up her left ear. We're gonna keep praying for her right ear. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, we speak a complete new eardrum in her right ear. Father, we, we're praying for a, a creative miracle right now in Jesus' name. Create her right eardrum right now in Jesus' name with all power and authority in Jesus Christ. In all power and authority and faith in Jesus Christ. You. you can hear me talking. Yeah, I know, man. In Jesus' I name. Just and both ear pieces are out. That is weird. Create this, Father, right now in Jesus' name. Complete this miracle, Lord. In Jesus' name, I speak this right now into her with all power and authority. In your name, Jesus, not mine, but yours. Your power, Father, in Jesus' name, create this eardrum in the right, Father. Amen. Amen. Nothing over here? But this one. But you can hear, Father. This really open this up more, Father, in Jesus' name, completely, 100%, open up this ear. In Jesus' name, open up this eardrum, Father. Let her hear, 100%, Father, not 50 not 60, not 70, 100%. Let her hear. In Jesus' name, open up and hear. I can hear that. that How much weird. can you hear? That is awesome. How much is back? <laughs> That's that good, awesome. man. God bless you, man. <laughs> wow. It's by no accident you guys came up on this call just to talk to us. God is good. And God can do the same with you. Here's my challenge to you now. I want you to get outside the four walls of the church. Prophesy. Pray for the sick, evangelize, capture it on footage, send it into us, and we may feature it here on Encounter TV's Mark 16 Miracle segment. Stick around until the end of the program. I'm going to give you some general contact information, and you can use that general contact information to submit your video. We're going to go back to Carson, California now, where I'm talking about the true power of God. Remember, everywhere the gospel goes, there is transformation. Everywhere the gospel goes, there is breakthrough. I want to encourage you today that as you hear this message that, and as your faith is stirred, that you would go and say, Lord, I want you to send me. I want to be a conduit for your power. I want to be one who declares the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's go now to Carson, California, where I'm finishing up this message. The scripture says in Mark chapter 16, verse 20, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. 
everything that God does, miracles, salvation, transformation, even financial blessing, he'll do for the sake of the gospel. If you're not seeing miracles, it's time to start preaching the gospel. If there's no power when you speak, it's time to start preaching the gospel. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 tells us that we'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on us. Why? To be witnesses of what? The gospel. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 says that Jesus was anointed, that the Spirit was upon him because he had been anointed to preach the gospel. The gospel is a spiritual message and the church is getting away from that. Pastors, get back to the gospel. <laughs> Believer, get back to the gospel. They say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of preach it just little by little, and then I'm going to slowly bring them in. Let me ask you a question. When is it a good idea to only preach a part of the gospel? Especially when no one is promised tomorrow. The problem with saying I'm going to slowly lure them in and little by little tell them the message is that it doesn't account for the unpredictability of death. There's no urgency to preach when you think that way. There is no time to preach the gospel. Someone asked me, do you believe these are the last days? I don't know if we're living in the last days, but I know for certain that today is somebody's last day. And that's enough to cause me to preach the gospel with urgency. The gospel is the power of God. Church, we need to stop being a referral program. Go see the psychiatrist. Go see the doctor. You have to counsel them for hours because you don't know how to cast out devils. You feel uncomfortable visiting the hospital because you don't have the power to heal the sick. And it only backs, those miracles only back the gospel message. He confirms his word. God so values his word. God holds his word in high esteem. That when it is preached. He will come himself and prove that it's his word. People look for proof. Jesus said I'll come to you myself. That's the difference between what we believe. And all the other false beliefs that people have about God. It's that Jesus himself promised I will come to them myself. But why? Because the gospel is being preached. Church, we need to get back to the gospel. Everywhere the gospel goes, it expands the kingdom of God. If you want to be kingdom empowered, preach the gospel. It's simple. It's simple. If it was difficult, we would mess that up. God made it so simple, and we still mess it up. <laughs> preach the gospel. The gospel is God's offer of peace to mankind. The gospel is God's extravagant mercy demonstrated for all to see. The gospel is man's bridge to his creator. The gospel is heaven's gift, the church's power, the world's hope, and hell's defeat. The gospel is the power of God. Church, get back to the gospel. I truly believe that if we can focus with urgency, preaching on the gospel, preaching this message with conviction and faith, that we will again see Book of Acts power. Why not now? God, do in the modern church what you did in the Book of Acts. To the hopeless, the gospel is hope. To those who are stained by sin, the gospel is forgiveness. To a dying world, the gospel is the cure. To the blind, the gospel is sight. To those who are bound by darkness, the gospel is the light of truth. Some of you were drug addicted, and then you heard the gospel. Some of you were on the verge of divorce, and then you heard the gospel. Some of you were on the verge of suicide, and then you heard the gospel. Some of you were burdened with your sin, but then you heard the gospel. 
You were bound by fear, weighed down by depression, overwhelmed with confusion. Some of you were religious and full of pride, but then you heard the gospel. Let me tell you something. The world is desperately searching for this purpose. They're longing for this hope. They're wondering if they have any value, but they're going to hear the gospel. And you and I, you and I have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to carry this message. Self-help is okay. Pastors, 10-point sermons on a better family, a better marriage, better finances, that's okay. We're called to preach the gospel. We're called to preach Christ and Him crucified. I'm believing for a move of God. And so if God's speaking to you, I want you to stand to your feet. Lift your hands, close your eyes. of the Holy Spirit is here. The presence of the Holy Spirit is here. are about to be healed right now. Many of you are about to be set free right now from things that have plagued you for years. A single moment spent in God's presence can transform your life. In the name of Jesus, I bind all sickness, all pain, let the healing power of God flow. Be made whole right now, right now, right now, in Jesus' name. You don't have any feeling in your foot? How about in your leg now? Is it coming back? You're, you're sensing it coming back. He's sensing feeling coming back to his leg right now. Jesus makes you whole. Jesus makes you whole. Can we give Jesus a hand of praise? I believe the anointing of the Holy Spirit is flowing right now. now. You're watching this. You heard the word concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. You heard about the power of the gospel. And then you saw what the Holy Spirit did in Southern California. I love the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And I believe right now, as you're watching, 
that God's power, the Holy Spirit's presence can meet you right where you are. Whatever your need, our God is able. This gospel that is being preached comes with benefits. There is power on the proclamation of the Word of God. And I believe right now I can feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit flowing. Let's pray and let's ask God to touch your life. Let's ask God to fill you with a fresh empowering of the Holy Spirit. Father, in Jesus' name, come on, in faith, I want you to stretch your hands toward mine. Lord, I pray for that one watching me right now who is looking to experience your touch, who wants your presence, wants your power. Lord, we with all of our hearts desire you, your presence, your power. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that that one watching would be empowered that one watching would be transformed right now. Someone watching me right now, the call of God is on your life. And you've been doubting and you've been asking the Lord. You said, Lord, I want you to confirm to me that I'm called to preach your gospel. Here's your confirmation. You're called to preach the gospel. Lord, I thank you for your power flowing. Father, I pray not only for a fresh touch, not only for the empowering of the Holy Spirit, but Jesus, that you would make that one watching who's believing for a healing completely whole. Lord, I pray with boldness that not one person watching would walk away from this broadcast the same. I rebuke all sickness right now. The power of your word, Lord, breaks the power of sickness. I speak against cancer right now in Jesus' name. I pray for those suffering with blood disorders, heart disease in Jesus' name. Somebody watching me right now, you've had severe arthritis for several years and it's all throughout your body. And right now when I just said that you sense like a heat come on you, some of you sense like electricity, some of you sense like heat, but God's touching your body. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. Somebody watching right now with a severe back issue, you've just been healed in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. The power of God is moving, and I really do believe that you'll never be the same. There is power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, that is it for this edition of Encounter TV. I'm David Diga Hernandez, and remember until next time, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. To connect with me and this ministry, visit EncounterTV.com. There, you can watch full episodes of Encounter TV on demand, submit videos of you ministering on the streets for our Mark 16 Miracle segment, and see upcoming ministry events in your area. Also, don't forget to download our ministry app by searching my name, David Diga Hernandez, in the Apple or Google Store. Thank you again for watching Encounter TV. Hey fam, Stephen Moctezuma here. I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel and to share our content. I hope you're enjoying all the content that we're sending your way. In addition to David's teachings and ministry videos, you can also join me on my worship playlist where I release a brand new video every week. Thank you guys so much for watching Encounter TV. God bless.